everyone, I'm Leslie Hernandez and I'm on the social impact team at Unity. I'm excited that you have joined us in our session today where you'll learn how real-time 3D has been a breakthrough innovation in advancing training and learning, especially in the medical field. Today, you'll hear from various luminaries who have overcome access barriers to inspire the next generation of medical and healthcare workers. You'll hear from Dr. Masina Morris from Morehouse College about how her community has leveled up education with VR classrooms. Secondly, you'll hear from Professor Philip Poronek and Martin Brown from the University of Sydney on their leading innovations in biomedical sciences. Lastly, you'll hear from Sam Glassenberg from Level X on mobile gaming technology and design that have upskilled practitioners. Now, let's dive right in. That is our story. It is how Morehouse launched their curriculum in virtual reality. It is just a preview of some of the work that four very passionate professors did. Myself, Dr. Messina Morris, Dr. Ethel Vereen, Dr. Tanya Clark, and Dr. Ovell Hamilton did in the spring of 2021. This is our story. There was a, a, a student by the name of John, let's say, who came to me on the campus of Morehouse College, desperate for change, desperate for change of major and wanting at first to be a physicist. Well, physics didn't quite work out for him and he decided to change his major to chemistry. That worked for me. And as academic program director at Morehouse, I made a deal with this young man. I made a deal to make sure that I helped him achieve his goals. And me, like the other three professors, 
that I worked with on this particular project, we had high hopes for our students, in particular, the students that were in our classrooms that we affected every day. We embarked on this project because we knew that having access to this technology for our students would be a game changer. When they stepped out into the field of medicine or healthcare or any other profession that they chose, that they were going to have to have some access to digital technologies. And we were going to level the playing field. And that's what we did for our student named John. And that's what we did for all of the students on Morehouse's campus. It takes a lot of grit to go through a pandemic, but not just that, go through a pandemic and decide that you're gonna transform the landscape of education. And that is exactly what we did. Saturdays are for VR, because on Saturdays, we as professors came together, all who were parents, took the time to work with each other and actually create the spaces that our students would inhabit. The things that they needed to feel like they belonged that included culturally responsive, um, culturally responsive classrooms that reflected what the campus felt like in real time, in the reality. And when they emerged on the digital twin campus of Morehouse on that engaged platform, they were astonished. Astonished because they hadn't stepped foot on campus and astonished that they were going to be able to engage with content in a way that they never had before. This is how we provide access, access and opportunity. There should not be a great digital divide. We have seen it across the globe, but everyone should have access to this technology. And we felt that way, especially about our young black men at Morehouse College, alma mater to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a school that is known for its social impact and change. And this time we were going to do it in innovation. We were gonna do it in a way that all students had access to. And we were gonna do it in a way that would make a difference in the life of a student just like John. The interesting thing is when John took my class, he was a senior. It was an advanced in organic chemistry course. And John confided in me recently that he never saw himself at the finish line. He never saw himself walking across the stage. And I stand here because I've always had my heart on my on my shoulder or on my sleeve, as people say. And I call myself the compassionate chemist because of that. Because of my compassion, because when I make a promise, I stick to it. That student was able to see his dream realized and walk across the stage. That student who was the student of a young woman who was a little girl who couldn't picture herself where she is now but only had hopes and dreams and a father who believed that getting his baby girl, a Commodore 64, even if he had to work on a million cars in our driveway after work, that he was gonna do that to help me realize my dream. And therefore it was this little girl who saw herself as this huge idea machine, who was the voice for people who did not have a choice or a chance that decided to level the playing field for her student. Someone like John, and for you, it can be someone like your own John. You can do it too. It's easy. Get you a wonderful, fabulous team like I did of professors who are like-minded and you can launch your school into the metaverse and break down barriers in education for all of your students. I did it for John. You can do it for your John. Thank you. So welcome, um, Martin and I are from the Faculty of Medicine and Health <clears throat> Media Lab at the University of Sydney in Sydney, Australia. 
and we're looking at emerging technologies in education and research. And today we'd like to tell you a little bit of a story about what we've done in Unity with our first semester unit of study for the first year students. Um, I'm in charge of the Bachelor of Science Medical Science, which is a three year program that has about 500 students in each year. And most of the students are interested in entering the healthcare system or becoming a doctor. And we're really trying to convince the students that the future of medicine is really digital and it's very interdisciplinary. And so we're trying to convince these first year students that there's a lot more to medical science than just being a straight doctor. And this creates a few challenges for us because of course these students are about 17 and 18 and very, very focused on career paths. And of course, like all universities, we have our graduate attributes. And in particular, we're very interested from the media lab perspective in thinking about digital and creative fluencies. So how these students can really create and be confident in digital um, scenarios. And also very importantly, to make them self-managing learners. All the students these days, like all of us professionals, have to actually be able to learn on the go forever and ever. And I like this idea of digital resilience as well, so that the students can actually um, ch be challenged by digital things like coding or whatever, and they actually raise to the challenge and solve problems and become better students for it. Um, the really important thing is that we live in a 3D world and all of the stuff in medical sciences is very, very 3D and involves training and everything else. And with the onset of Unity and the, the platforms that are very accessible these days, now we can actually create these worlds for the students. The students can actually work together in teams and create worlds and we can be part of that scene, okay? So given that, the question is what can we do to actually make that a worthwhile proposition for the students to learn. Um, bearing in mind the students that we get come from relatively privileged backgrounds, most of them, about 20% are international students, and most of them have, have little or no experience of coding or working in a 3D world, so it is a really big challenge for them. And things like Unity is a significant challenge in terms of equity and access because it's a large program that does actually, some students can't run it on their computers. And so we're working together with Unity now to try and create a world that students can actually access online and work together in teams. So it's a very exciting project that we're doing. In the first year, we actually start to ask the question about how can the students curate their own learnings. So now that we can create 3D worlds for our students, the, the question is, can we actually use these worlds in a way that the students can actually curate the evidence of their learnings in a, in a, in a, in a virtual environment? one that they can share with their family and potential employers. And this idea, whole idea about students being able to generate an interactive e-portfolio of their achievements and learnings is a very attractive one that we'd like to explore in this project. And I'd like to hand over to Martin to talk a bit more about the nitty gritty of this project. Thanks, Phil. So I guess over the last generation or two, what we've witnessed is that the most popular medium for communication has shifted from books to flat screen video. And what we all are aware of is that we're just now beginning to explore 3D digital space as the medium of choice for communication. COVID has required our university, like all educational institutions, to move our coursework into the digital space. And almost all of this educational content is flat screen video and video conferencing. I don't think after COVID we're going to go back to normal. So Phil and I are interested in, in exploring ways that we can introduce the 3D digital world as a teaching space. Add to this that we have to deal with the fact that new knowledge is growing exponentially. So for example, the half-life of an engineering degree is now three and a half years. That is that half of what we teach an engineer at university is out of date three and a half years later. For Phil and I, that means that we need to teach students how to learn more than we need to teach them what to know. And we're finding that requiring our students to complete an assignment in 3D digital space on the Unity platform has the collateral benefit of challenging them to become proficient in a new medium. We're not teaching them Unity, they are acquiring skills in Unity in order to complete an applied medical science assignment. When we set them the task of building a 3D digital museum space and then curating an exhibition of digital assets around a medical theme, uh, we want them to explore the extent to which curating a journey through this exhibition in 3D space makes the content more memorable. Our research is based on a well-known memorization technique called the memory palace. This is a recall technique in which you associate pieces of information with a mental journey 
through a location with which you are very familiar. For example, if you want to memorize a deck of cards, you look at each card and associate it with a place along a favorite walk, say through your house, out onto the street and down to the shops. For example, the Queen of Hearts cooked tarts in my oven. When you want to recall the information, you retrace your steps back through the mental journey and you can recover the information. And yet this act of curation is about more than remembering objects in a sequence. It's about object-based learning. This is a mode of education in which the integration of authentic or replica objects into the learning environment. The objects can be anything, specimens, artifacts, artworks, books. If a picture paints a thousand words, how many does a 3D object paint? The engagement with the object itself can provide a learning opportunity, but so can the juxtaposition of the objects. The assignment allows students to place objects in proximity to other objects in such a way that the viewer creates their own third meaning. So the placement of objects in a curated 3D digital space can, we believe, create more indelible memories. The objects themselves can provide rich learning experiences and their juxtaposition can create new higher orders of meaning. But there's also another layer of meaning available to the curated journey, and that's the power of storytelling. Students are encouraged to think about the narrative that guides the journey through their exhibition. Are they telling the story of the emergence of life from a single cell organism? Are they telling the story of evolution? Are they telling the story of a disease? These choices not only deepen their skills as science communicators, they also reinforce the way we make meaning out of evidence. The last benefit of this assignment that I'd like to mention is the opportunity for peer-to-peer -peer learning and co-creation. The 3D space itself becomes an objective environment in which they can negotiate decisions through the choice of objects, the juxtaposition and the story they tell. We're currently sharing the 3D digital assignments on flat screens, but we can't wait to start exploring them via collaborative VR in headset. Thank you. Thank you, Philip and Martin. Hi, everyone. I'm Sam Glassenberg, CEO and founder of Level X. And I was invited to share what can be described as a unity for humanity success story that's played out over the last six years or so. It's a case study in a highly successful games company built around achieving good for humanity, built around this mission, this mission of advancing the practice of medicine through play. So this has been our mantra at Level X. Now, what the heck does this mean? For one, it means using real game tech, you know, like Unity, and deep game design to accelerate the adoption curve in medicine. Because when a better treatment or procedure becomes available to medical professionals or surgeons, it can be years, it can be decades, until that becomes what we call the standard of care. And it's not because doctors are backwards or because they're stubborn. They want to deliver the best care for their patients. But it's, it's because they aren't given a good way to train that often doesn't involve practicing and ramping up their skills on live patients. And so at Level X, most of our 130 employees are experienced video game devs and designers. They've worked on every genre from Mortal Kombat to Words with Friends, and we team them up with hundreds of physician advisors and contributors across every major specialty to capture the greatest challenges of the practice of medicine as video games. So we're pulling from all corners of the video game designers toolbox here. We've got shooter mechanics to capture the challenges of surgery, puzzle mechanics to capture the challenge of, of rare disease diagnosis. And in service of great game design, we're pushing the limits of the hardware and engines like Unity with awesome game graphics and physics tech. This is the kind of stuff that puts us demoing head to head at on stage at SIGGRAPH with you know, Unreal and NVIDIA, tech that eventually makes its way back into consumer video games. And I'll, I'll start by showing you an example of one of our games. Uh, I always like to do demos live, so I'm just gonna do this here live off of my phone. Um, we have a bunch of games in the App Store. You can feel free to download them. I'm gonna start with Gastro X because I always like to demo with a colonoscopy first. Um, and so we have over 750,000 medical professionals playing our games. Uh, they're filled with dozens, sometimes hundreds of real cases that have been submitted by doctors around the country. Now, some of these cases you can actually earn continuing medical education credit, CME credit toward renewing your medical license. Um, but all these cases are you know, rare, challenging cases that have really occurred uh, in operating rooms across the country. 
Uh, so I'll start with this one. And again, I'm just doing this here on my phone. Um, and this isn't you know, just like an interactive 3D model. This is a totally interactive virtual patient. What do I mean by that? Well, this patient is squishy. The tissue moves. I can grab anything anywhere and it behaves just like it would in real life. You even get the subsurface scattering as you pull the tissue toward the, the light on my endoscope. Now, this is a routine polypectomy. I need to find all the precancerous polyps that hide behind folds. So maybe I'll use different tools to push them around. Uh, here I've got a polyp sort of out in the open. So I'll come in, I'll grab it with my forceps. But what I don't realize, this is a rare scenario where the polyp embeds on a blood vessel. So when I remove it, I trigger a bleed a meter inside the body. So here on top of Unity, we've built a 3D computational fluid dynamics system. Um, so literally on my phone, I can move the tissue around, the blood pools and moves around realistically. I can spray water to try to stop the bleed, but all that does is just sort of dilute things. The bleed keeps coming back. So I need to take more drastic action. In this case, I can grab my argon plasma coagulator, come in and seal the wound. Now, now I've got this sort of mess of blood and water here uh, that I can find my remaining polyps in, but you know, we're short on time for this talk. So I'm just gonna show, it's a totally interactive virtual patient. I can cauterize anywhere. You can see how it affects the normal maps and well, until eventually I cause too much damage and fail the case. Um, so we can do some more, some more demos in a minute. But the idea here is we're capturing these rare challenging cases. And while most games are featuring characters inside of environments, at level X, we're literally creating environments inside of characters. So the stuff that we're doing is really kind of important. And if you solve problems like these in healthcare, you can have real impact. Um, and a few examples. So, uh, you, and the other advantage of doing this with games, especially on mobile, is we can have that impact quickly. So when COVID hit last year, demand from our medical professional players on the front lines was pretty overwhelming. We had patients that were literally dying in emergency rooms in New, York, in New York City, because when you have to assume that everyone coming in the door has COVID, someone who might be showing up with a pulmonary embolism is very likely to be misdiagnosed. So we took a, a reductive reasoning diagnosis puzzle mechanic that we had originally developed for cardiology, and we quickly launched levels into our pulmonology game, as you've seen, you know, five games in the, in the app store. And so we did this to teach you how to differentiate between COVID and diseases that present like COVID. Um, in addition, getting somebody on a ventilator, that this isn't just a matter of shoving a tube down someone's throat, managing their airway, you can actually think about it as a complex strategy game. Luckily, we had already built a strategy game like that with the American Society of Anesthesiologists. Now, the rules for this all changed with COVID. If you followed the standard airway guidelines on a COVID patient, you were likely to damage their friable airway and aerosolize the virus when you try to bag ventilate them, which would put everyone in the area at risk. But we're a game, right? So all we had to do was update our game rules. First, we updated them with the guidelines from the Italian anesthesia societies, because they were the ones, as you recall, that were really dealing with the surge of COVID first. And then we updated the game with guidelines from the CDC and the ASA when they caught up with Italy. Another important issue from the past 18 months were recent events really brought to life longstanding racial inequalities that we see in society and unfortunately, Healthcare is no exception. Just one example. This is an example from dermatology. So it's been long known that people of color of different skin tones from all over the world do not get the same quality of care when they go to the dermatologist. They're more likely to be misdiagnosed. Why is that? It's not out of malice on the part of the doctor. The doctor simply hasn't seen enough cases of your rare skin condition on your specific skin tone in order to be able to recognize them. It's not his or her fault. They just haven't seen enough patients of color. And in the literature, like in the actual reference books, there is a total dearth of reference images of many skin diseases on skin of color. Games can solve this problem. So at Level X, our artists and our engineers 
built on the best skin rendering tech in the games industry to create a pipeline that can generate any skin disease on skin of any color. And then we built a game using brain training mechanics to feed all of this content into. So dermatologists can literally train their brain to recognize these diseases on patients that they don't see every day. And everything that we make here is free to doctors. Um, we're sponsored by uh, major uh, by major medical device and life science companies. The folks with the latest medical technologies and treatments companies like Medtronic and Baxter and Philips that have treatments that the doctors want to learn how to use, just not through practice on live patients. And we're also working with NASA to use all of this tech and these game mechanics to train astronauts for medical emergencies that may occur on deep space missions later on in this decade and the next one. So what happens when we succeed on our mission, right, here on Earth? So at Level X, we envision a world where games take their place along all the other broadly accepted approaches to knowledge and skill development in medicine, right? So today, Level X, we say, we make games for doctors, right? Well, what does that mean? Somebody might raise an eyebrow. Five years from now, we make games for doctors, right? Oh, we make games for doctors. Of course, games for doctors, right? That's not gonna surprise anybody. Five years from now, games for doctors, it's like it will have always been a thing. It's just how doctors learn now. We actually don't think that future is very far away. So if you believe in this vision of the future and you wanna make great games that revolutionize medicine while winning games industry awards for awesome graphics and gameplay, Level X is hiring. We've created a place where you can use the latest engine tech, art tools and game mechanics without having to compromise to do great things for humanity. Thank you and thank you all for joining this session. Thank you for joining us today. Our presenters look forward to hearing from you to connect and possibly collaborate on a project. Here is their contact information. Thanks again. We hope you've enjoyed this session and learned more about how you can reduce barriers to medical and health pro training with real-time 3D.